When you think of a supercar, Honda or Acura is typically not the first brand you think of. However, that changed back in the early 90s when the original NSX first came to the US market. Now, since then, we haven't seen a new NSX since 2005, and I'm standing by the all new second generation model. It's brand new for 2017, and we've waited a long time for a replacement for honestly one of the best supercars that you could buy on the market. So was it worth that super long wait? That's what we're here to find out. Now, if you want to hunker down with me in typical supercar fashion, the NSX is low and wide, and that's really the only lineage that it shares with the first generation model. Everything about the new one has all of the new design languages that we've seen on the current crop of Acuras, except for the grill. This is the old shield beak grill uh, on the previous generation models. It's probably the most controversial element of the new NSX. I don't know. I don't think it looks bad. I think that either you're either going to love it or hate it. It'll be really interesting to see what this car looks like when Acura refreshes it and puts their new diamond pentagon grill. Now, all NSX models will come standard with the July LED headlights. They're full LEDs, uh, LED high beams, low beams, LED turn signals. And my tester has a carbon fiber appearance package. It's like another $9,000. It gives you this authentic carbon fiber front splitter, the side splitter, and the rear diffuser. It's a very aggressive looking car. It definitely stands out in a traditional supercar fashion. Now, you're probably also going to notice all the vents in here. Now, all the vents are authentic. They actually cool the engine. They cool the brakes. You can see there's an authentic hood vent here. Uh, there's some vents here that kind of help cool the brakes and creates like an air skirt. There's a huge vent on the side that helps to cool the engine because, as you guys know, the original NSX uh, was mid-engine, and this one is also staying true to that lineage. Now, my tester has the standard wheels. These are the 19 and 20 inch Y spoke gray finished wheels. Um, they're 19s in the front on 245 series tires, 305 by 20s in the back. So they're much wider tires. Uh, and then my tester has optional carbon ceramic brakes uh, with six piston uh, calipers in the front. Those are $10,000 for the brakes. Now, my tester also has the Pirelli P0 Trofeo R's. Now, that's actually a dealer installed upgrade. Um, these high performance tires literally are just like race car tires. Now, most NSX models will come with Continentals, which are more of a all season high performance tire. Uh, so really it just depends on your area. It definitely gives this car the supercar grip that you're looking for. Now, looking at the side profile, my tester is insanely beautiful in this Novelli blue color. It's a $6,000 option. It's my favorite color. So I would probably go with this color if I was gonna buy this car. And you can really see this car's wide stance and low proportions at the rear. The design in the rear is certainly unlike any other Acura. It has a lot of Audi R8 in the design language. You can see this carbon fiber rear spoiler is optional, like $3,600 option. Uh, and it, I think it looks fantastic. Uh, there's some quad exhausts that are hidden all the way down here. Because of the carbon fiber package, uh, it blacks them out. You can see there's individual pipes. The NSX's sound is definitely on the muted side for a supercar. I wish it had a little bit more growl to it, um, but really it kind of goes in the theme of Acura and Honda with being a little bit more conservative, even in their supercar testing. But overall, I think this car is very sexy. It definitely turned some head, heads. I was literally breaking necks everywhere I, turned, I took this thing, even though it's been on the market uh, for nearly two years now. Now, because the NSX is an Acura, it comes with the same key fob that you find on other Acura products. Slightly different for the NSX, where they actually write out the NSX at the bottom here to remind you that this is the company's flagship supercar, but uh, smart key access with push button starts included. Uh, it doesn't offer a remote start, at least not from the factory like this. It just has the traditional buttons. Uh, when you approach the NSX here, which is honestly a stunning sight, you can see here the door handles are totally flush. They actually This, this door handle actually is very similar to what you find on the Lamborghini Huracan. When you unlock the car, the door handle actually pops out and then you can basically just pull it out if it's not out um, you can basically just get your hand in here and then just pull it out on your own to lock it just touch that button here you can see it retracts back in to unlock it um, you actually don't if you push it that only locks it so if you want to unlock it you have to actually physically grab the handle and then pull on it 
and that will unlock the door for you. Now, looking at the interior of the NSX, first of all, you're gonna notice it's super low to the ground in traditional supercar fashion. Uh, however, the interior is rather simple in its design. I really love the way the seats look. Uh, my tester has the Orchid seats, which I probably wouldn't get because they will show dirt very easily. I probably would go for the red interior. You can also go for a black or a brown interior. Um, but again, the red to me with the Alcantara is probably my favorite. And you can see here, the pillar here is on the wider side, but the NSX is easier to get in and out of uh, compared to other supercars. The seats you can see here are power adjustable. However, they don't height adjust which I found to be a problem for myself because I'm shorter. I wish the seat would height adjust. Um, I found that some of my friends who sat in this who are over six feet tall uh, had, found it had plenty of room and they could see over the hood and stuff. For me, it took a little bit of getting used to. You can see there is a four-way power lumbar support here, but I think Acura should consider adding um, a, a height adjustable seat. And the seats themselves, they're heated, but cooled seats are not available. Uh, something that Acura, I think, should look into offering. Now, stepping inside, in typical supercar fashion, Ooh, you really have to look, duck your head. I've hit my head on this pillar several times and I'm short, so that's a little bit frustrating. But when you shut the door here, it sounds so solid. It's also very heavy. The doors are heavy. They're large. Um, it really adds to that feeling of quality when you first get into this vehicle. Now, as I said before, push button starts included. Um, all you have to do is put your foot on the brake and it starts up like every other super, uh, any other car basically, and then push the button here to fire it up. Now the NSX will start in whatever mode that you had it left at in um, when you turned the car off basically. You can change it to default to like a sport mode. Right now I have it um, defaulting to sport mode uh, where you can see here the gas engine actually is shut off and that's definitely interesting because this is a supercar. Um, to turn the gas engine back on you basically have to uh, turn the dynamic selector knob here all the way to the right. And now you can see we'll turn the gas engine back on. It puts it into its basically like loud mode with the exhaust, which again is not really loud by supercar status or standards. The gauge compartment here you can see is also unique to the NSX. Uh, it changes based on the drive mode that you're in. So example, when you are in sport or quiet mode, you can see here uh, the gauges kind of disappear. You still have your tack. It doesn't let the engine rev past 4,000 RPM. You have a digital speedo all the time. These gauges always stay there. When you switch it over to sport, uh, you can see it kind of extends out. It shows your battery charge, your charge assist uh, meters. Um, this pretty much always stays right there. And then go to Sport Plus. It turns red. It gives you an additional gauge there for your uh, oil temperature. Um, your battery display is there. You have your oil pressure. Um, you have, you know, your super handling all-wheel drive indicator. And then when you turn the knob and then hold it all the way to the right, which you literally have to do for like five seconds, it's a little bit too long. It goes into track mode. Track mode is interesting because it actually blanks out the screen. So Acura was thinking there uh, that if you're going to the track, you don't want to deal with the screen. So that's nice. You have to touch it to basically wake it back up. And then you kind of have the same screen functions you saw uh, in Sport Plus. Uh, but it does turn off the stability control. I don't really recommend driving it in track mode on the street, um, but this is the mode that you have to go to to engage the launch control. We'll go into the test drive later on. Again, the sound of the NSX kind of shows Honda's conservative values because it's not really as obnoxiously loud as I expected a car like this to be. But anyways, looking at the rest of this interior, you can see it's a lot nicer than what you uh, find in other Acura products. You kind of expect that being uh, this is the company's flagship offering. You can see the dashboard all has leather stitching basically everywhere. It's a very long dash as well. I can't even reach the top there if I'm sitting you know, from the driver's side. But you can see because it's a mid-engine design, the hood is nice and low so you basically have that sitting on the floor feeling uh, this pillar here is also nice and thin by supercar modern standards so your forward visibility is pretty excellent uh, the side mirrors are also a decent size they extend out far uh, which is nice the door panel interiors here the leather is basically carried over you find authentic aluminum trim some piano black plastic you do have two person memory seats which is nice the windows are one touch automatic for both kind of expected that there's only two windows anyways um, it's nice and padded right here there is a little bit of storage right here where you can put your wallet and your phone, which I find is to be the best place. Um, right here is your speakers. There's no additional storage in the door pockets aside from just right there. Uh, looking at the um, center stack here, you can see there's real aluminum trim. Uh, there's pr rather simple controls as well. You can replace the aluminum trim with carbon fiber if you guys want to. Uh, and then you can see here, there's also some suede Alcantara on the glove compartment here, uh, which is also a nice touch. The steering wheel is also unique to the NSX, aside from the buttons, which are basically pulled off of the other 
corporate Acura parts. Um, you can also change the aluminum here to carbon fiber if you want. It's got some aluminum paddle shifters which are mounted to the wheel. I kind of wish they were column mounted. Uh, but the steering itself, it's electric power steering. I'll go into the test drive later on, of course. You have, you know, all your controls here. A cruise control, your audio controls here, Bluetooth controls. There is no adaptive cruise control available on this car. In fact, there's no Acura, you know, watch of safety systems. Not even blind spot monitoring, which I found this car's blind spot to be rather big when you're changing lanes. This pillar here on the back is just huge, so you have to kind of get used to that whenever you're changing lanes. The view out of the back also is decent by supercar standards, but again, you're going to be sitting super low, which is not what you're used to. Now, this head unit here is the same head unit that you find in a lot of the Honda Civic and CRV products. Um, it was actually the first Acura product to get um, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you put your phone in here, your smartphone connected, you'll have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So the NSX was actually the first Acura to get it. The TLX was the second one. But again, how many of you could actually afford this? Now, going to the nav system here, it's the same Garmin-based navigation system that you've seen on other Honda products. Although Acura did replace that with an NSX logo here to show the car moving, so at least they did change that. When you put the vehicle into reverse here, you also get a backup camera uh, with parking sensors. It also has, uh, or it's parking sensors front and rear, and it has trajectory. I kind of wish it had a 360 camera just to help with parking uh, this thing, since you don't want to curb something like this. It's very low to the ground. Uh, but at least it has those modern you know, tech features here and there. The touchscreen itself, I'm not terribly always happy with the how slow it can be at times. I found that, like for example, I'm trying to push right there. It's literally taking forever uh, to work, which is a little bit on the annoying side. Honda has a better system that they've shown us in the Odyssey and the Accord. It's kind of frustrating to see the older head unit here in the NSX. Again, this car has actually been on the market for uh, nearly two years now. Now down here you have dual zone climate control. Uh, you have your drive mode selector, which I honestly kept grabbing for the volume at times. It has that stupid volume slider. So hopefully Acura refreshes the NSX and adds you know the new infotainment system with a volume knob back. Um, your heated seat controls are down here. It's got three level, three level heated seats. There's room here to put a cooled seat button. I don't know why Acura didn't give us cooled seats, especially at this price range. Down here, it's the familiar push button transmission selector we've seen in other Acura products. P is this park button, or this P button here for park. Reverse is that, uh, neutral is that, and then D uh, for drive. And then if you push it again, it goes to a manual mode. Um, the sport mode, again, is access through the dynamic selector. Uh, you have an electronic parking brake here with a brake hold. There's really nice materials here. You can see it's all stitched. It's all suede Alcantara. Uh, there's uh, um, an area here for storage, uh, which I actually found useful for keys uh, for your wallet. Uh, your phone also fits in there nicely as well. There's a little bit more storage back here. Uh, and then there's a little flip out parcel right here where you have your one USB port uh, and your aux port there with a little bit of storage. It's pretty small. The storage capacity in here is pretty, is pretty lacking, especially by Acura Honda standards. Now you're probably wondering where are the cup holders? Well, if you look in the glove compartment here, it's a decent size. Um, at least it has a glove compartment and it's lined in felt. This is the cup holder. It kind of reminds me of uh, my ND Miata, but you kind of stick it in this little slot right here. And then voila. There's your cup holder. It eats into the space of the passenger side. So I did sit here with the passenger, with this cup holder here. I'm pretty small, so I fit. Um, but again, if you got somebody who's really tall, you may want to take this out because uh, it probably will get in their way. The seats, as I said before, they're really supportive, comfortable. I love how you know they hold you in place, but they they also are really nice on long trips. I find the seats to be really comfortable. Um, but overall, the interior of the NSX. Um, I think that it has some pretty nice materials that kind of remind you you spent a little bit more money. I mean, this is wrapped in leather and it's suede here on the roof for an extra three thousand dollars. But um, the side, the sun visors, however, are a little bit on the cheap and flimsy side. So I'm a little disappointed they didn't wrap this in leather as well. So there's a couple of elements in here where you know it is nicer than the typical Acura products. But then I see some of the part sharing in here, and I'm kind of thinking to myself, man, I wish that Acura went a step farther and made this a little bit more unique for this car. But again, uh, it, the NSX is cheaper than a lot of its Italian and German competitors by you know fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. So I'm kind of nitpicking here. Uh, the interior is very familiar, um, but again, it does some of elements of it doesn't feel quite as special uh, from some of the more exotic competitors. So most cars that are mid-engine typically don't have anything underneath the frunk, but in the case of the NSX, 
It's actually not a frunk. Uh, you actually do have your radiator, some wires, some access to fluids in here. Um, basically, the electric motors live underneath here. You can't really see it from here, but it's uh, two electric motors at the front that power the front wheels only. Now, if you want to follow me over to the rear of the vehicle, this is where you're going to find the engine of the NSX because it's a mid-engine design. Now, the trunk is also connected back here uh, to the engine compartment. You can see the trunk is seriously small. This is small by supercar standards for sure. Um, its competitors give you a lot more space. I couldn't even fit a standard roller bag in here, the kind that you actually put up in the airplane compartments in the cabin. So pack light if you guys are gonna actually own this car. But underneath all this authentic carbon fiber, which by the way, it's almost four grand for it. I probably wouldn't spend it. You're gonna find a completely unique engine for the NSX. It's a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6. It's a 75 degree bank angle as opposed to the 60 degree that you find on the transverse engines that you'll find in an Accord. Uh, this engine on its own produces 500 horsepower. And honestly, that's very competitive, uh, especially in this day and age, about 479 pound feet of torque. Now, when you combine it with the three electric motors, there's also one at the rear, the NSX combined will put out 573 horsepower horsepower and 479 pound-feet of torque. That's good for 0 to 60 in around three seconds or so Acura says. And fuel economy, it's a hybrid. It must get good gas mileage, right? 21 in the city, 22 on the highway. That's better than like the 13, 17 you get on those V10 or you know V8 or V12 powered supercars. So it is better, not necessarily sure. I think it's the point, but the NSX is pretty heavy because of all those batteries, about 3,900 pounds. It all goes out through a nine speed dual clutch transmission. It's an Acura design. Let's get out on the road and see how it all performs. So for the moment you guys have been waiting for, I have been so excited to show you guys how an NSX drives. You all have been so curious to know how this uh, new hybrid supercar drives. So enough waiting. Let's get out on the road and see how the NSX actually does out there. And you know, the NSX is doing something right now that no other supercar will do. I actually had it start up in quiet mode. I'm in this really quiet, like, area park that um, people, there's like a bunch of people around. And honestly, you couldn't do this in a Lamborghini, a Ferrari. They would be very loud, but hey, I mean, this is the wave of the future, right? A hybrid supercar, and even right now, I'm cruising along in quiet mode, and it's basically, they should rename it to Prius mode because the car cruises along at up to about 30, 30 miles an hour in only electric mode, and you can see the tack is blacked out because there's no gas engine, it's not on. You don't hear a thing. It's just kind of making that traditional electric motor whirring noise, and you know, even if I put my foot down a little bit more, this is so weird. This is so strange. You don't expect a hybrid supercar or supercar to drive like this. To me, honestly, just going down the road here in quiet mode, it feels like I'm driving a TLX. Like, it feels like a luxury sedan, aside from the fact that you're like really low and then you can hear the gas engine kicks on there. And honestly, the NSX is very, very easy to drive. It's a little boring in quiet mode, I mean, some of you may think it's cool that you can do this in a, in a supercar. Some of you who are more purists are just kind of annoyed with the fact that why is there an electric only mode? Because if you guys think about, you know, the competitors, the hypercars that are like a million bucks, some of them like the LaFerrari and the P1 do not allow you to drive only in pure electric mode. I think only the Porsche is the only one, but this is strange. But uh, enough of the quiet mode. Let's move the dynamic mode selector one more notch. That takes us to sport mode. You can see the tack changes, um, and I actually instantly feel a surge of power. It's almost like in quiet mode, it really like holds everything back, and actually it doesn't let the engine rev past four grand when it's in quiet mode. So um, you really are saving the environment <laughs> when you're uh, just, if you choose to drive this car in quiet mode all the time, it's just different. The brakes in this car also feel strange because they're brake by wire and they also have regenerative brakes. So when you step on them, they don't really do anything until you have to step on them a little harder and then they really grab. So it just takes a little bit of getting used to. So this is the sport mode. As you guys can see, it's pretty docile. Like, again, this kind of just feels like I'm driving a luxury sedan that's just been lowered. Um, the visibility in here is really good. The transmission, this is a nine speed dual clutch and it's an Acura design transmission. And from what Acura tells me, it's really just a seven speed with two, you know, with a, a really short first gear for launching and then a really tall overdrive gear, ninth gear for cruising. 
And really, you know, with the magnetic rheological dampers that this car has is standard with, when you have it in the different modes, it really has so many different personalities. I mean, the ride is surprisingly comfortable. I mean, I've driven the McLaren 570S Spider, Mercedes AMG GTC, Nissan GTR Nismo. I, did, I drove those a couple of weeks ago. And really, the NSX definitely straddles the line toward the comfort end, just like the Mercedes. This is something that you could easily daily drive. You can really see out of this car so well. The front is just really great visibility. The hood is so low because it's mid-engine. This A-pillar is so thin. The side mirrors are large. Now, it's a good thing the visibility in here is good because there's no driver assistance tech on the NSX. Now, the view out of the back is a little bit small for that window, and you have a really big blind spot here when you're trying to change lanes. So it's just something to kind of get used to. Um, but really, I'm super shocked. I mean, this to me, other than just being low, anybody can get into this and just drive it. So if you guys have always been intimidated about driving a supercar, just get an NSX. This is one of the easiest cars you can drive, you know, supercar or not. So I'm pretty much done with the quiet and sport modes. The one mode that you're gonna always wanna drive it in is Sport Plus. Do that and the gas engine automatically wakes up. Um, the exhaust goes into an open mode the steering gets a lot heavier, and you can hear immediately, the car feels so bloody different. It's crazy. This is the most, this is the, the first time I'm driving a car that seriously has so many multiple personalities. If in quiet and sport mode, it's so docile, but once you put it into sport plus, this car reminds you that it's no ordinary Acura. It's no ordinary Honda. And this is where the NSX should be driven. It should automatically default to this mode because if I'm buying a supercar, God damn it, I want it to be loud. I mean, the styling already shoots screams, it's loud, but the, the engine noise is not really loud until you do this. Holy sh... That was only um, three quarter, th no, that was like half throttle and okay, so... <laughs> The NSX is not a car that you want to drive on tight roads like this, if you don't know. So I'm gonna hold off on doing that again. Now, obviously you guys wanna see the launch control in this car, but we're gonna find another stretch of road where I can do that. But let's first talk about the handling because this car has electric power steering and my tester has the Pirelli P0 Trofeo R tires and holy shit, this thing seriously grabs the road like crazy. Wow. <laughs> now this car is all wheel drive, but I'm noticing one thing. It feels like it's mostly rear wheel drive because the gas engine only drives the rear wheels. The front engines are only driven by the two electric motors up front, which honestly the gas engine just overpowers the electric motors so much. They're only there to assist with masking the turbo lag, which by the way, this is a car that I feel has absolutely no turbo lag. And I've driven a lot of modern cars, modern turbos where the turbo lag, you know, where it has those hot Vs where it does a good job of hiding it. This actually, shows you that those hot V engines still have a little bit of lag. This to me is just instant response. And you'll be really impressed. If you've never driven a turbo car, this will fool you into thinking it's naturally aspirated. <laughs> and look at, that, look at that transmission, it's so smart. It just knows exactly that it wants you to downshift. <laughs> That's, oh my God, that's fantastic. <laughs> and oh my God, it actually has some turbo blow off whistle noise. I was not expecting that, but. <laughs> oh my God, this thing is ridiculous. Speechless. <laughs> I gotta get me one of these. You know, there's so, there is a lot of good amount of hate on the NSX, but honestly, that hate is there just because a lot of you have never driven this car. But I guarantee you one drive, and it'll make you a fan of this thing immediately. Even though it, it doesn't follow the traditional Acura heritage of simplicity with the old NSX, Acura had to go a different route because, you know, this is 2017. They needed to deliver something more. And you know, this to me matches the level of speed that I'm feeling from the Nismo GTR. I'll let you guys know as soon as I try the launch control out, but um, holy crap. The one thing about the NSX though is even, even in Sport Plus, it's really easy to drive, if I'm being honest. Like you, 
I have a really comfortable ride, even in Sport Plus. Um, the seats are really comfortable. It's not that loud in here. Really, the only thing you hear, aside from some road noise from these really sticky tires, is the engine, which to me doesn't always have the most pleasant noises. It sounds better in Sport Plus mode during certain RPMs, but then there are times where I'm like, what is this terrible noise it's making? It just doesn't have that lovely you know, noise that you get from the, you know, the boosted V8s or even the naturally aspirated V10s and some of its competitors for sure. So to engage the launch control in the NSX, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is turn the dynamic mode all the way over to the right and hold it for literally too long. That goes you from Sport Plus to Track Mode, which again, takes too long. It shuts off the screen there, which is nice, and then it also turns uh, the stability control off, um, which I don't recommend for you know street driving. But then all you have to do is just use two feet, left foot on the brake, right foot on the gas, floor it. It'll settle the revs at around 2,000. It'll say launch ready. Oh, sh Holy fuck! <laughs> um. <laughs> so I'm gonna attribute that feeling to the same joy that I got from driving the GTR Nismo. But this car will basically launch to 60 in three seconds, which if you guys have ever driven those blast roller coasters, the ones that literally just go pew, that's exactly what the NSX feels like. The level of immediate thrust you get. And the thing is the NSX has something the GTR doesn't have. It actually feels more violent off the line because of the electric motors. It's, it's using mostly the batteries and the electric motors to really launch you hard because electric motors have torque basically right off idle. You don't have to rev them, and that's why the, you can literally feel the car buck down, and that's just fantastic. We have to do that one more time. Just one more time. <laughs> so what if you're just hustling the NSX on a back road? Well, this is where this car surprisingly is easy to do. I mean, it is wide, and you're gonna feel how low and wide it is, but the steering is really sharp, as I expected, direct. It does have a little bit of numbness, if I'm being honest. Um, the uh, Nismo GTR, to me, had a little bit more alive steering. The McLaren also way more alive, but again, I kind of expected that. This car kind of goes for that video game um, disconnected feel you get from the GTR, but a little bit more of a modern interpretation of it. Let's try the paddles here because that's always an important aspect. And they respond lightning quick. Uh, it's what I really like about the paddle shifters. I wish they were connected to the wheel. There is one flaw with the paddle shifters that bothers me. Now, for example, right now I'm in third. I'm going down to second. Love the noises it makes when it's, you know, when downshifts. But, you know, I want to go to first here. I'm going to slow down. And I'm slowing down to 20 miles an hour. It's 15. It's not letting me go to first. It doesn't let you go to first until you've come to a complete stop, which I think is really annoying. <laughs> and you know what? Because Acura does not offer a manual, I was expecting the manual mode to give me full control, and the fact that they didn't give me full control really just kind of annoys me. Now, I heard that Acura locked you out of first gear when you're you know, going anything above like two miles an hour because they, did, they say first gear is just for launching, it's a super short gear, and it's quick. But honestly, if I'm driving a supercar, give me that control back. I want to be able to have that control. And really, I only want to downshift to first at low speeds because I want to hear the engine make those burbly noises from the exhaust. Because that's always likes to hear. This is a supercar. I want the noises to make, the noises it makes to basically match the shoutiness of the exterior. <laughs> but anyways, the NSX definitely lives up to the hype. And it proves that Honda, when they really put their mind to it, can build a world-class supercar. There's just a couple of kinks that I think it could, a couple of tweaks that they need to do. First of all, they need to let me have, go to first gear when I'm in manual mode. Super annoying how it won't let me do that. Even when I slow down to like five miles an hour, it should let me go to manual or first gear. I'd like to see them follow up the NSX to keep it from getting stale. That's one thing that Acura tends to do is they, they let they let their products get stale. I want to see them do like a Type R version, something with over 600 horsepower and a convertible. I want to be able to put the top down, especially in this segment. A convertible is just always something that that people are always looking for. And you know, to be honest, the NSX has the exotic car looks. 
just in my five days of driving this car, I, I lost count of how many necks I broke. Like everybody stared at me in it. Even when I was just trying to cruise, even when I had it in Prius mode, in quiet mode, saving the environment, people still drove by, took their phones out, took pictures, you know, gave you a thumbs up. So if you don't like attention, the NSX is definitely not the one you want, or at least anything in this segment really isn't what you want. But that's probably why the Porsche 911, which this car competes with, sells so well, because it has more of a docile look to it, where you can kind of fly under the radar, yet still, ever, yet enthusiasts still know it's an amazing performance car. So just keep that in mind, you know, if you guys are lucky enough to be able to afford something like this. So it's not every day that you actually get to test a supercar for an extended period of time. Now, the NSX is actually the first supercar that Redline has ever gotten for a longer loan. And after driving this vehicle for five days, I'm happy to report that it actually does live up to the hype. It has the performance that you expect for a modern day supercar. It has the looks that seriously broke so many necks as I drove this thing everywhere, even when I just took it to the store uh, to get some groceries. And it's also lives up to the hype in terms of the driving dynamics. The steering is sharp, it's quick, being a little bit numb though, um, but overall its weight is hidden whenever you guys are starting to attack some corners of the thing. I think that's really important when it comes to driving a supercar. But unlike a lot of other supercars, the NSX is honestly a really easy car to daily. As you guys saw in the test drive, it's super quiet on the inside. Its ride quality gets really comfortable when you guys put it into its normal and quiet settings because of that adjustable suspension. And the seats also do a good job of being, you know, hugging you, but also being comfortable on those longer drives. So in typical Honda Acura fashion, this is a supercar that you could daily drive and see out of and just kind of drive every day. And I think that's a really important aspect of a supercar uh, versus some of its competitors like the Nissan GTR, which is just too harsh. The McLaren 570S Spider, uh, when I drove it, seriously just scraped everywhere it went. This wasn't really the case. So what's it gonna cost to put an NSX in your driveway? This is where things start to get a little complicated because the original NSX was like $60,000 in the 90s. This now starts at $157,000. Now, of course, inflation, that actually puts it right along the same lines as the original model. Now, my tester has basically all the options. It's fully loaded. Uh, this one stickers for just over $200,000. Now that sounds like a lot of money and it's unattainable for most of us, but if you guys compare it to all of its competitors, the NSX is actually a really good value. A Porsche 911 Turbo S is easily over 200 grand. A Nissan GTR Nismo is also around 175,000. And if you guys want a McLaren or a Lambo, that's easily $300,000. Now, of course, those cars have a Lamborghini, a Porsche badge, a Ferrari badge, which again, may mean a lot to you. But if you're looking for a supercar that you could daily drive, uh, that still attracts a lot of attention, that has that reputation for Honda and Acura reliability, the NSX is really, or really should be at the top of your list. Anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2018 Acura NSX. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.